You're in the Business Insurance Zone with me, Steve Saban, National Financial Columnist and Financial Color Commentator. This week on The Biz, the Asset Protection Series, and on today's show, commonly overlooked liability insurance with National Columnist and Attorney at Law, Ike Debji. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm your host, Steve Savant, and we're broadcasting live to a nationwide audience of financial advisors right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's largest fountain. And with me today, in day three, attorney at law and national columnist at all that is asset protection, Ike Devji. Hey, Ike. Thank you, Steve. Well, welcome to the show, Ike. And, and what I really, I'm a little disturbed by the title, actually, because I'm thinking you're pointing out commonly overlooked liability insurance. And I'm thinking like, well, wait a minute. Don't all attorneys do this? Isn't the level of asset protection, isn't that already standard out on the street? And that sounds to me like, hey, there are some things that are being hugely overlooked. And there's monster economic liability and exposure to this. You're absolutely correct on, on both counts. Number one, it is routinely overlooked even by attorneys and even in many cases by insurance agents themselves. Um, who have the same kind of perhaps limited view in mm. some cases of what a client or individual's risk picture looks like. As you know, we work with a couple thousand physicians nationally mm -hmm. as part of our asset protection client base, another couple of thousand much higher net worth business owners. The number one exposure that all of those folks face, no matter what their business is, statistically, is the danger of an employee lawsuit. In fact, the American business owner is five times more likely to be sued by an employee than for almost any other well, reason. Well, wait a minute. I'm sorry. That's, that's curious to me. Are you saying that it's, if I have a doctor, it's not his patients that are suing him, it's his employees? I am saying that the physician, for example, who has employees, has mm -hmm. both exposures. Statistically, he's going mm -hmm. to be sued or she's going to be sued about twice during their practice life over a medical malpractice issue. Mm -hmm. but they're five times more likely to be sued by someone who works for them than for any other reason. So, the, for instance, the kind of mm -hmm. insurance that comes into play to help protect our clients in that area as the first line of defense is called EPLI, or Employment Practices Liability Insurance. And I routinely talk to doctors with successful practices, uh, some case solo, some case group practices, uh, for, as just one example, who don't have that coverage in place and in fact have never even had it mentioned to them by their insurance professional. Now, as an insurance professional, how do we know how to talk about this? I mean, this is, isn't this legal? Isn't this under the jurisdiction of an attorney? Well, I think attorneys are instrumental in helping clients spot the exposure. So mm -hmm. I, for instance, when I walk a client through an asset protection questionnaire, if you will, ask questions about how many people work for you. Do you have an employment manual in place that was professionally drafted? Do you have EPLI insurance, this employment insurance, mm -hmm. to help cover the costs of defense or even the award itself if there is a lawsuit? Is, is this pretty expensive from an insurance point of view? I, you know, Steve, it is underwriting specific just like every other kind of insurance. I could be a surgeon. It's it, going to be specific to my vocation? It's going to be specific to a number of different factors, including your previous history of claims. Uh, just mm. like with auto insurance, right? If you're a good driver and you haven't had a lot of issues or accidents or speeding tickets or DUI, your insurance is going to be substantially cheaper than someone who has had mm -hmm. all of those issues. If you've had multiple employment lawsuits in the past, it's going to cost more money to get the insurance than mm -hmm. perhaps someone who hasn't had an employment lawsuit. Either way, mm. the cost is pennies on the dollar in most cases of even what the retainer in, in, a, in case of defense would be. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if you walk into an attorney's office and need defense against an employment lawsuit, you're gonna have to put down five, 10, 15, $20,000 in some cases just to get that attorney to just start. Just a retainer. Right. right. Wow. Now compare that to the cost of the insurance and the value becomes clear very quickly. Mm -hmm. Well, I am surprised. I, I would think, uh, like in a physician's practice, I think they're, they're mostly protecting themselves against patient issues. But it sounds like you're saying this is much more exposure, and you said the average is twice in their career. Twice in, in their career on malpractice. Mm. 
but they're much more likely to be sued by an employee, as, as we said, is just one, one common example. In fact, the average sexual harassment, and this is going to shock you, Steve, the average sexual harassment verdict in this country is $530,000. Now, I don't care how successful your client is, that is a hit that is devastating to the majority of American-owned mm -hmm. small businesses. That, that amazes me that that number is that high, and you're saying that that's somewhat frequent. And employees are suing more often, winning more often, and winning larger and larger judgments. We're also seeing more and more of these claims made in times like we have mm -hmm. now, where we have a tough economy and some mm -hmm. conditions of economic duress. There are many employees who are willing to do and say things out of fear and desperation that they might not have done in the past uh, under quote unquote normal circumstances. Either way, it's important that we all in our different ways protect clients against these exposures. Well, I could see that this insurance offering this is really, uh, you would cut you out of the pack and make your practice distinctive by bringing this to their attention. And I think uh, some of the stats that you have here are just unbelievable. Well, they'll talk a little bit, what else would I need? You know, when I'm looking at over, commonly overlooked liability insurance, that's one, that's a big one. That's a huge one. The second one is what we call data breach or cyber liability insurance. And this applies not just to doctors, but to any business, including financial advisory firms themselves, including law firms, including CPA firms, uh, that handles sensitive, confidential information that would be injurious to your client if it was exposed. So even a normal advisory who has a nice financial practice, who has specifics about their client's finances and their, maybe their client's life insurance medical information that's inside the application, this is a whole new place to look for for exposure. You're absolutely correct. And you called it cyber or data breach or cyber liability. Unbelievable. Well, I have to talk to our uh, sponsors on the show after this one. <laughs> Listen, we'll, when we come back from the break, we're going to continue listing our overlook liability, all part of our asset protection and our asset protection series. And don't forget to hop out to our site and join our IULUniversity.com for the best training and support when it comes You're to You're listening insurance. to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant with Ike Devji. And remember, you can sign up and order today's support materials at our website at thebiz.tv. And just a heads up, before moving forward with any of the ideas you hear on our show, always consult a tax attorney and your counsel. And if you're FINRA licensed, always check in with your broker dealer before you move forward with anything we're talking about today. And what are we talking about? We're talking about overlooked liability insurance. Just at the break, we were talking about data or cyber hack. I'm thinking about all the cyber hacking you've been hearing about. I mean, Facebook just got hacked last week, right? We're talking about confidential information, and it sounds like we have a liability just because we're holding it on our computers. That's absolutely correct. All of the advisors who are watching certainly have that liability. They're handling a variety of different kinds of mm -hmm. sensitive and confidential information, including social security numbers, bank account numbers, investment account numbers. They are handling, in some cases, HIPAA protected information that is uh, confidential and legally protected mm -hmm. healthcare information. Exposure of that healthcare information has statutory mandatory minimum fines for people, and the exposure can be in seven figures. What wow. kind of exposure are we talking about? Well, for instance, Steve, let's say you have a financial advisory firm. It could be that you get hacked, like the Facebook incident you mentioned. Or something more common, it could be that someone breaks into your office or you lose or have a laptop stolen that has access to your CRM system. It could be an iPad. Uh, today, it could even be the iPhones and the other smartphones that mm. we all routinely carry. Uh, it can be accessed by yourself, by a spouse, by a child by an employee, and of course there's always the potential, as much as we all hope it's not us, 
for intentional misuse of the information you have by someone in your office hmm. who could be selling credit card numbers or account numbers or anything else. All of these things are going to fall in terms of the legal and financial responsibility on the owner of that business. Now, are there contracts or, 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 or kind of insurance to protect against this? Well, yes, that's the data breach or cyber mm -hmm. liability insurance that we're talking about that comes in to help cover those costs, the defense costs, and even the, re the remediation costs in terms of, for instance, if you have a large number of clients whose financial information is exposed, part of what you might be responsible for is credit, or credit monitoring for each of those people for up to three years mm -hmm. or longer. Uh, imagine having to pay for that out of pocket. Oh man, I can't believe, I can't, uh, it's staggering to me, all the incidences that could happen that you just listed and how important it is, especially in today. I'm, I'm thinking if Facebook's getting hacked, where does that leave the rest of us? That's, that's exactly correct. And in, in some cases, it's not having the right insurance mm -hmm. or all the right insurance, like, as we just mentioned, for instance, with the employment practices liability insurance and the data mm -hmm. breach or cyber liability insurance. In other cases, it's not being adequately insured on the coverage you do have. Mm -hmm. So for instance, one of the questions as an asset protection that I ask every single one of my clients who has a car or drives a car is about the limits of their automobile insurance policy. Something that basic is also one of the most common exposures mm -hmm. that we would see. Do you think it's rare that people get into car accidents? Mm -hmm relatively not. It's perhaps less likely than some of the other things that we worry about. Yet we have people routinely with high net worths who've worked 10, 20, 30, 40 years to have and be what they are and who they are who have inadequate automobile mm -hmm. insurance coverage or don't have adequate limits of personal injury coverage on their commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, if you own an apartment building or a strip mall or even an office condo that runs your particular medical practice or your accounting practice, it's important mm -hmm. that you have the adequate level of insurance, not just on liability, but on loss as well. Well, I'm thinking that you're really talking beyond the traditional personal umbrella policy. Is that what you're really saying though? Because that, you know, a lot of people buy a $5 million pup policy uh, to truly cover some of these things you're talking about. Are you talking about greater than that? I think that it's not greater than. I think that the idea of an umbrella policy is a great idea. Mm -hmm. If my clients don't have one, I always encourage them to get one. Mm -hmm. But I think that it on its own cannot reasonably be a shield against everything that happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be a pretty bad business model for the insurance company to take one check a year from you mm -hmm. and say, Steve, no matter what happens or how much it costs, mm -hmm. we've got your back. Mm -hmm. That's just naive. And I think that part of our duty as advisors, whether you're an attorney or an insurance advisor mm -hmm. or a CPA, is to have these conversations and help people understand the limits of that. In fact, you've seen something by me called common fatal flaws oh, yeah. of asset protection planning. One of the top flaws is relying purely on the insurance alone and assuming that there will never be an event that is either uh, a greater financial exposure than the limits of your coverage, or that every single bad thing that could possibly happen was, you were sheltered from that by writing one or two checks a year. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make sense. Well, I, I have to say that um, if you're watching this show right now and I'm thinking about my, my own uh, practice, we really need to up our game in this regard to really make sure that we're insulated from events that you're talking about. And I've even noticed that some of the traditional insurance that we do understand, like even basic E&O, errors and omissions, that we think that's going to do what we're, it's going to protect us. We made a misstatement. We made an error. I'm hopefully not deliberate or fraudulent, but these are the things we're talking about. Yes, the E&O and malpractice insurance are two different uh, sides of the same mm -hmm. coin and there are a number of things that they don't cover that there is another type of wow. insurance that is specifically for especially for owners and operators of closely held businesses or C-level executives. Well tomorrow we're going to talk about not only some of that but we're going to talk about directors and officers liability insurance. We're going to take a whole show on that because I cannot believe how much exposure there is in this regard. Remember, you can watch this show and all our shows by going out to our website at thebiz.tv. Just sign up on our homepage. Well, that's the buzz on the biz for today. You've been in the zone, the business insurance zone. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. 
When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use.